Hello, and welcome to Building High Performance Cultures, a weekly series where we talk with leaders and culturepreneurs from top organizations about how they've built high performance cultures and how they're putting culture at the center of strategy to help drive exceptional performance. I'm Marty Parker, the President and CEO of Waterstone Human Capital, and my guest today is the President and CEO at Bruce Power, Michael Renchek. Mike, welcome to Building High Performance Cultures. Hi, Marty. It's great to be here today. It's awesome to have you. Just to, to tell, tell you a little bit more about Mike. So since before joining Bruce Power in 2016, Mike has overseen the company's operations, isotope programs, not everybody has those, and community and economic development efforts while launching a 13 billion, and I said billion, dollar life extension program to extend the operation of its eight nuclear units to, 20, to 2064. Now, as a professional engineer and a certified senior reactor operator, I also don't say that every day, Mike. Mike has held senior roles in leading organizations within North American energy industry, which include Areva Group, Areva Inc. in North America, American Electric Power, and Florida Power Corporation, just to name a few. He's been recognized with numerous awards, including the CEO of the Year for 2020 by the Ontario Chamber of Commerce, and the gold award winner as the executive of the year for the energy and utilities category at the 2020 CEO World Awards. Exceptional achievements there, both. And of course, under his leadership at Bruce Power, he has won two of its three Canada's most admired corporate culture awards, most recently in 2020. Mike has also demonstrated a great commitment to many organizations that make a difference in people's lives, including Habitat for Humanity and the United Way. Now, Mike, for people who aren't as familiar with Bruce Power, and that would be very few people, uh, of course, but tell us a little bit about the organization and the culture that you have there. Yeah, thanks, Marty. Uh, first, a little bit about Bruce Power. You know, we are here in Tiverton, Ontario, which is rural Ontario. It's about two and a half hours northwest of Toronto. And quite frankly, we're the largest employer in the, in the region. We employ about 4,000 people. But I think, you know, it's really important to highlight what those people do. Here at Bruce Power, we supply 30% of Ontario's electricity at 30% less than the average residential cost to generate. So we are a low cost power producer, but we make this power with nuclear energy. We operate eight nuclear reactors here in Tiverton it's the largest operating nuclear site in the world. But we also do things like save people's lives every day. And it's a great honor to be able to do that. You see, we make medical isotopes. Uh, we make isotopes that sterilize 40% of the once-use medical devices around the world. So you think about it this way, if you go to the doctor's office or the dentist's office anywhere in the world, chances are, it was sterilized by an isotope made here in Little Tiverton, Ontario. But we also make cancer treatments. Uh, we power the gamma knife, which is used to treat brain tumors and also breast cancer. And we're moving into the production of lutetium-177 this year, which is quite an innovation of our, uh, of our people to be able to really uh, change how cancer treatments can be viewed in the future. With this production system, we'll make lutetium-177, and it'll be used as a theranostic, which means we can diagnose and treat cancer at the same time, but also it's a treatment for prostate cancer. And then once that production system proves out, we'll install it on all of our reactors. You know, I think it fits our culture real well from an aspect of social responsibility, both when we look at how we provide electricity to support Ontario's families and businesses and well-being, but then the medical isotopes. Really, that, that aspect of saving lives every day is really important to our people. So when we look at our culture, we're always looking at safety first. We're looking at being reliable and dependable because people count on us all the time but we're also looking at securing tomorrow because we know it's more than just what we're doing here today, that there's people counting on us and we need to be there every day for them. And I think it sets a tone for the whole organization. Absolutely. And that's a whole bunch of things that I bet you a lot of people didn't know. I'm glad you, you, you spoke about saving lives. Mike, as a, as a leader in the organization's CEO, what is your role in building and sustaining corporate culture? You know, organizations are really all about the people. 
Uh, we have great people and people do great things here at Bruce Power. And I think, you know, living that vision and that mission that we have here at Bruce Power helps, helps from a people perspective, look forward and really identify with a purpose. And as the leader, defining that purpose, make, making sure we're staying focused on that purpose and, and doing it in a manner that resonates with the values of the people. And we've embodied that in a set of, set of documents that we call our vision, mission, our excellence model and accountability models. And it really helps the whole organization to align and focus on the things that are not only important to our people, but important to the people that count on us. And I think as a leader, making sure that we get, get this anchored and really take it forward each and every year and keep our focus on it, even, even during a pandemic, right? And I, I will tell you, I think it's served us better in this pandemic than in, in, in good times uh, to make sure we stay focused on it and deliver what people are counting on from us. Mm -hmm, I'm sure. Mike, how do you and your team ensure that culture is really at the center of strategy for Bruce Power? Yeah, when we look at this uh, culture, you know, culture is everything. Culture enables uh, strategy to be executed and executed well. And, you know, as we all know, if you have a strategy and you're unable to execute it, it really doesn't lead you anywhere. And I think that that starts with our vision of, of just simply stating we will power the future and also with our mission. And our mission is to generate clean, reliable and affordable electricity, life-saving medical isotopes that strengthen our communities, protect the environment and secure tomorrow. And I think that core mission of you know safe, reliable, secure tomorrow really helps keep us in an alignment and we place that in what we call our excellence model. So that mission is the center of it. And then we drive our excellence model through values of our people, through behaviors, and through what we call our human performance tools. So it's always a focus on the people. It's always a focus on what we're here to do and then how we go about doing it, doing it to make sure that we're getting the results uh, at the site that people are counting on us for. And we're doing it in a manner that we find uh, really fits how our values of our people. So, so you talked about the excellence model, Mike. You, you launched it in 2019. You know, talk a little bit about a, a little bit more about that, about how it came about and how how it's actually helping drive performance. Yeah, when the company was first started, the Bruce A units were shut down, and quite frankly, uh, the company was started to be able to restart those units and really breathe back life into the Bruce assets and the communities here in rural Ontario. And, and, it, and as we accomplished that, it became apparent that we could really do a lot more here at Bruce Power. So we, we changed our vision and mission, as I talked about, for the company in 19. And with that, we, we, we went out and we talked to about four or 500 people that work at Bruce Power to see really what made us tick as an organization. We aligned that vision around it and mission around it, but then we wrote down the, the values that we kept hearing over and over and over again. And the values were safety first, performance excellence, and social responsibility. And, and those values aligned very well with our, our mission statement, our vision, we looked at our company behaviors, uh, how we go about doing that, driving for results, communicating effectively, treating each other with respect, and then how we go about making sure that we perform our work every day to the highest standards, things like our accountability model, which is really a structure for success. It starts with safety first. It talks about what, uh, what we want to achieve, what does good look like, and then do we have the right resources and people to do it? And then we try, and if we if we don't if we don't succeed at first, we try try again. So we do a gap analysis, find out where it fits, and we go back at it again. But we don't give up; we keep pursuing. And I think that's one thing at Bruce Power that has made us successful over these 20 years is that resiliency. Like I said, uh, restoring the plants to operations, working through some really dark days here when the plants were shut down and the layoffs and the down uh, down issues in the community. And it's really served us well in this pandemic to be resilient and keep working through this and supporting our communities, our supply chain, and, and all the folks here in the area and throughout Ontario. Mm. Well, it's certainly a long way away from those dark days where you've uh, where the organization is today, and and obviously it's it's changed and grown and 
and is much more of a, of a diverse business. And speaking of, you know, of, diverse, of diversity, talk a little bit, if you would, about diversity and inclusion and the strategy behind those at Bruce Power. Yeah, you know, it, we're, like you said earlier, we're investing in a $13 billion uh, life extension program here at Bruce Power. Just by, that by itself is creating opportunities for, for everyone. And we always talk about there, there is opportunity here for everybody with collaboration and cooperation. People can come to work here or our supply chain and really have a bright future. So when we started, when we started on our uh, program in 2016 to renew the facility and be able to operate to 2064, we wanted to make sure we were creating opportunities here for people, uh, communities, for people, for companies. Uh, with that, we, we started an economic development platform uh, and really have reached out to all communities in the area. That includes our indigenous communities. Uh, we've had about 60 or so companies now move into the area. And, and quite frankly, uh, Gray Bruce and Huron County, they're experiencing prosperity that they've never seen before. But also all through all through Ontario. We do business with about 500 companies throughout Ontario. We're creating about 22,000 direct and indirect jobs, about 4 billion each year in GDP for the province. Uh, so we set up what we call our Indigenous Suppliers Network. And through that network of supply chain, we're going about ensuring that we're providing these opportunities and creating opportunities for all of our communities in, in the area. Specifically, we have a Saugeen Ojibwe Nation community here, uh, Métis Nation of Ontario, and a historic Saugeen Métis. And we've done a number of things. Uh, and I would say we really spent the time to listen and understand in this regard. But we've done a number of things to create not only economic prosperity, but to really understand the culture inferences here as we're operating in their traditional territories. So that's then, uh, that then takes us to the next step of hiring. Uh, and uh, quite frankly, our hiring team's just done a fantastic job. Each year, we keep increasing the number of uh, diversity candidates uh, that we hire. Uh, and I will say uh, both females, visible minorities, and people with disabilities uh, we've been focused on. We are increasing the people each year, and we're hiring for talent. Right. So we're going out, we're looking, we're doing outreach, we're bringing people in, we're providing uh, the necessary toolkits for people to enter the organization and prosper. And in some of these communities, we've gone out and created companies. We have newly formed indigenous companies now providing uh, plastic suits for us that we use every day. We have an indigenous construction company that we help form that's building things here on site. And, uh, and I don't want to steal any thunder from people, but we're just about ready to, to partner with another company that's going to be a fabrication company that's a newly established Indigenous-owned business. And I think we're just going to keep moving along these lines over time and uh, it just be the way we do business. And it, it'll be part of our culture and, and how we go about doing things. And I I think that that's one thing that separates us. We're, we're doing more than just talking about it. We're doing it. But part of that is also looking through our succession plans, person by person, and, and looking at their development plans so that we can make sure that people are getting the proper development early on in their careers so that they're ready for senior roles in an organization. So they've done job rotations. They've been in different groups. They've had experiences and they're able to take those positions and rotate through with confidence, being able to, to advance. And I, and I think that's what we offer here at Bruce Power. It's that prospect of a, of a bright future and that, that prospect of, of being able to help not only ourselves, but all of our communities in the process. Well, Mike, and, and, and I know that's a fact because I know you have a very robust leadership development program that includes things like leadership assessment, a mentorship program, a high potential leadership pipeline program. So, you know, with all of that and all the investment, why is leadership development such a focus for your team? You know, leadership is key to creating a culture and, and keeping a culture. And we do that through our leadership development programs and we're pushing it at an at a earlier and earlier uh, beginning in the organization. 
And it's that alignment with a team to make sure that we're, you know, we're actually living our vision and mission statement through that development process. And, and one, it makes it sustainable knowing that when we're all aligned around these, these values, around these behaviors, around these tools, that we put them into practice. And, and through that, it becomes habit. And once it's habit forming, right, it'll be sustainable for the long term. Now, granted, you know, business changes over time and we have to change and we, and we continue to look at what others are doing and learn from it. But that's part about having a good culture. It's a learning culture. You learn from others and you take those things that fit you well and adopt them in, in advance. And those innovations apply in leadership development as well as the technical development. And we're just excited to be able to, to continue doing these things. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit as well, because it's so interesting, Mike, about your net zero 2050 strategy and a little bit about the origins of it or how it came about. Yeah, you know, this is probably one of the things that uh, we work on a lot is, is really talking about nuclear power in this regard. You see, nuclear is effectively CO2 emissions free. And in here in Ontario, because of Bruce Power's restart of the Bruce A units, we've been effectively able to change the emissions profile here in Ontario. As an example, in the early 2000s, when coal was abound, there were probably 53 smog days every summer. With the restart of Bruce Power's units, we were able to supply about 90% of the energy to phase out coal here in Ontario. It was actually the largest clean energy initiative under, ever undertaken in North America. And as a result of that, like today, we, we don't have smog days in, in Toronto. It just, it just doesn't happen anymore. You might get an hour here or there with an inversion, but it's primarily uh, resulting from the transportation sector now, not the electric sector. Right. And when we look at, we will look at that footprint here, we nuclear supply 60% of the energy in Ontario uh, hydro supply, uh, power supplies about 25 percent. Renewables is about 8 percent. And then we have gas and others to make up the rest. Well, deep decarbonization of an electric grid is be believed to be below 50 grams of CO2 equivalent per kilowatt hour. Here in Ontario, we're at 35 grams. So We've been able, by the restart of Bruce units and the use of, of nuclear here, we've been able to deeply decarbonize uh, our footprint in Ontario. And, and as we look at that, that net zero by 2027 is an aspirational goal for us. We want to make the statement that, yes, this can be done, and it can be done well, and, and we're going to lead it there. And we're doing a number of things in this space to create a carbon offset programs, working with uh, our agricultural community in the area, but also here at site to make sure that we're, you know, we can produce potentially more clean energy and also provide the offsets for any emissions that we have underway. But it's an exciting time in here, here at Bruce Power. It'll drive innovations. It'll help us with the adoption of, of an electric uh, vehicle fleet and really push electrification uh, into the province. We want to lead by example, and it's the same comments I, I give you around the diversity and inclusion. We want to lead by example. We want to lead by doing, not by talking about it. I also know that both you and the organization of Bruce Power are very connected to and very active in the community. So talk a little bit, speaking of doing, uh, of some of your community-based programs and how they align with your culture at Bruce Power. Yeah, you know, I think it, it resonates very well with our people. Yeah, one of the key values is social responsibility, and we take that serious. Uh, it's, it's really thought about in all aspects of, of everything we do. Uh, it started with the economic development platform in 2016. Like I said, we've seen now complete rejuvenation in some parts of the counties. We have over 250,000 square feet now of abandoned or burned out factories that were were idled decades ago, now back in use. Storefronts that were vacant and bordered up are in use with these companies. We, we have a new spirit and a, a new vibe in the area now. You know, the little, the little town of Saugeen Shores uh, north of us has about 14,000 people in it, and they have $100 million worth of building permits going on. So there's new houses being built. Over 300 small businesses were started. But, you know, when the pandemic hit, 
it, we really got impacted uh, like most places did. So we had to make sure that we could conduct ourselves here. But then once we got ourselves uh, organized in a manner that we were sure we could, uh, we could safely do things, we turned our attention to our communities. And with that outreach, uh, we supported the local hospitals with PPE. We supported local businesses with hand sanitizer, PPE. We created platforms for online purchasing where they had none before. So quite frankly, we've been working through this pandemic and we've not only done that here in Bruce Bay and Huron counties, but we've also reached out in other areas around Ontario to help out to make sure that those areas uh, who didn't necessarily have that type of infrastructure could receive some support and some of this help. And our supply chain has been fantastic. Like we've been, when we put our protocols in place, we've been able to roll those COVID protocols out to our suppliers and we effectively kept them functioning through, throughout this whole pandemic. We issued $500 million worth of orders in the first months of the year to 500 suppliers and really kept their, their pipeline flowing and their people safe. And as a result, they've been able to join us through our economic and economic recovery and retooling council to help sp spread out further to supply hand sanitizer, PPE, and, and other items to help in their community. So it's been a fantastic outreach from that regard. But, you know, we didn't just stop there with businesses. We, we got up and running what we call a, a nuclear innovation institute. And, and through that institute, we've been bringing advanced uh, computer programming the, during the entire pandemic to the children of Gray Bruce and Huron counties. So they're learning how to program in artificial intelligence languages. I think it's grades three through eight. We've had some thousands of kids go through this now, uh, as far away as Ghana, Africa. And it, quite frankly, now uh, with the school shut again in this pandemic, we're teaching uh, STEM classes an hour a day, uh, hour in the morning, an hour in the afternoon to about 300 kids. And that'll grow. Uh, we've reached out to the schools. We're helping in 65 classrooms teach programming. We're teaching teachers. And we're also teaching uh, students. And then that, the last thing I would say is be, because we've been able to do these things, everybody in, participates in helping out. So when the food banks were under pressure, we got donations to the food banks in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. When, when United Way was under pressure, we did outreach and fundraising for United Way. Uh, when, when other organizations like that were struggling in the pandemic, we found ways to, to, to make it viable for them to continue on and, and keep working. And it's, it's just been a great, uh, a great uh, community support, great business outreach, and we really have kept ourselves uh, collaborating and, and working throughout the pandemic. And now, you know, I think now we're ready for this recovery like everybody is. So uh, I think with the vaccines coming back, you know, we'll be able to take the next steps here over the coming months to, to, to get back and, and do some things on a broader level. Well, it's just an exciting time. I could talk all day about this. It's just really exciting for us and it fits our values so well, our people, are people really aligned to that and really engage in it? Sounds that way. So looking ahead, uh, Mike, three, four, five years, what do you see as being critical to aligning your people, your team members to your culture and to continue, in other words, to sustain this high performance culture that you have today? Oh, yeah, we, we, you know, we have great things on the horizons. When I look at the people that are joining Bruce Power now, I wish I was that smart when I was young. <laughs> <laughs> they are fantastic and you know getting them into the leadership programs really getting the culture aligned and keeping that that high performance culture going forward are going to be important but when i look at the opportunities they're going to have it's really creating and shaping a clean energy future for decades to come you know when we look at the bruce power facility here uh, we have plans to effectively create another reactor and a half's worth of power we have the ability to get into synthetic fuels like hydrogen production or other fuels that could be used to green transportation. Our carbon, our carbon offset program is just getting off the ground now. And to be able to take that into the next decade, I think will provide opportunities on a very broad scale for people. 
Uh, on our isotope side, I think the sky's the limit there. When this new production system gets in service, it will, kind of, it will be able to produce, produce isotopes in real time. We'll be able to align with cancer researchers on the isotopes that they want to prove out and assure them that if they invest in the research, we can mass produce it when they're done. And I think that'll open up a whole new avenue in terms of cancer treatment, theranostics, where it's both a diagnostic and a treatment at the same time. And I think these economic opportunities and synergies coming from the energy cluster that we created here will really build a strong, uh, a strong economic infrastructure. And with that, stronger communities. And with those stronger communities, a better uh, socio infrastructure here all throughout the area here in rural Ontario. That would do more than sustain a high perform your high performance culture. It'll sustain really uh, a lot of communities and jobs and people, and and uh, that's more than a noble cause, I would say. You know, Marty. One thing we yeah. one thing we learned there is that you know business and community are one and the same. You can't have a strong business and a and a poor community around you, and, and you know with a with those two things in sync and in synergy, it it just makes business all that much more fun, and, it, and it's a great area for our people to live in. Yeah, you bet. One final question for you, Mike, and that is, what's one piece of advice that you'd give to a young person, a new leader, perhaps, who's just starting out on their own high-performance leadership culture journey? Yeah, I would always say, take the hard jobs. You learn the most from them. And, you know, it, and they may be challenging, but it's through that, it's through that work ethic and, and learning and then those job rotations that enable you to develop across, and be proficient in the way the business operates. And with that, you, you are able to hone leadership skills. You're able to understand how the business integrates, not only here with internally, but also externally with communities and with, with other entities. And I think that produces a well-rounded leaders and a proper focus, especially when you look at our vision and mission. I, we need to make sure that we're continuing on this path of not only looking at our business, but looking at our communities, looking at the environment and really securing tomorrow. And I think, you know, I think this pandemic has taught us that, right? Don't take things for granted. When we work together and we collaborate, we can do great things we have great people here at Bruce Power and great people do great things. And I just excited, uh, excited for our future. Well, and uh, there's, I think we've all learned a lot of different things today, particularly a number of things and the reasons why Bruce Power has won Canada's most admired corporate cultures and, and uh, a number of other uh, awards, but the clearly your vision and your application of the behaviors that drive it, <clears throat> the excellence model, is a great alignment tool, clearly thinking bigger into an economic development program, not only in terms of helping uh, the right communities, but helping communities and established businesses that, that you're there to support and work with, which is far sustainable than, than uh, anything else. And I think the commitment to leadership development is, uh, is significant um, at, at Bruce Power. And that, that is something we hear and even in our own uh, leadership training and development business today, it's so sought after that uh, that people want their careers. They want they want to know where they're going, and they want to they want to help getting there. And then I think this the the kind of very unique and innovative idea of the Nuclear Innovation Institute is one that that sits with me. And the knowledge that nuclear power can do so much, not just reduce a carbon footprint, but help us save lives, as we started with today. And and. And Bruce Power, uh, you know, spending so much time and energy into that uh, is, is pretty is something for I think all all members of the community of the province and even of the country to be proud of. So, on that note, I want to thank everyone at Bruce Power and our guests today, their CEO, President and CEO Michael Renchuk. Thank you for uh, for joining us. Thank you, Marty. It's been a pleasure to be here today. Been terrific. And join us next week for another episode of Building High Performance Cultures. And in the meantime, if you want to learn more about the topic, please visit waterstonehc.com.